Hello and welcome back to Moffitt Field. Today we're going to be doing something a little different and taking a tour of some military vehicles with my brother Dominic. We're in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And this is, what is this? 1942 Ford Jeep. 1942 Ford Jeep. And you've done it up as an amb uh, like a medic. Field ambulance. Field ambulance. Are you able to tell by the coatings on the vehicle where it was made and th stuff like that? Um, yeah, maybe the serial number on the engine. Never thought about that. I see. And these identify it as a Ford or? Correct. I see. So what uh, gauges does it come with? Oil, fuel, temperature, uh, amperage, and speed. And it's a six volt, you said? Six volt, four cylinder. So standard clutch, brake, gas, shifter. What's the small? What are the small? To engage or disengage the uh, front wheel drive. And then the second part is to disengage, uh, go high or low. And does it have locking wheels? Nope. They're like permanent. So they're permanently locked in? Yep. And that's why you have the disengage knob on the inside. And what's the number on the hood represent? Uh, just the uh, serial number of the vehicle. So what's S for? Oh, that's just part of the serial number. S stands for uh, radio, protected for radio purposes. You know, extra grounding, extra insulation so that you can run a radio through it. And these are pretty standard tires and everything this vehicle would come with. Correct. And are these blackout lights or what are these small? Yes, yeah, blackout lights. Small lights on the front? lights, right. And did you have this... Uh, stretcher rack made or is that standard? No, I just made that sort of like a field modification. What else should we know about this Jeep? Ford made more Jeeps than Willys did because they couldn't, Willys couldn't produce them fast enough. So Ford made more than Willys did. I don't know. Are these your crutches from, <laughs> no, I found those the from your skiing days? <laughs> No, I found those at a show. Let's see. And it comes with a standard uh, Pioneer kit, Correct. shovel, and axe. Mm -hmm. Some of them have picks, the bigger trucks. Let's see. How much does this thing weigh? A thousand pounds, maybe. And you said here are some blankets. Our father served in World War II in uh, Patton's Third Army. Correct. As a field surgeon. And here is his blanket, or his, uh, this is his sleeping, sleeping bag. bag. And you can see on the sleeping bag it has his name, Samuel J. Gelsomino, Captain, not sure what the other mon numbers are, M.O. Is this the uh, serial number? Oh, serial number. What's this round thing on the fuel canister? Uh, water bag. Were these strictly for fuel, or would they use these for water also? No, water also. And what's the markings on the back, the 106? That's is my dad's unit number. Oh, the, the 106 infantry? The 106 medical. And then the D1 is company D, vehicle 1. I see. Are those actual markings that were on the vehicle that dad drove? No. No. Well, I don't know. And these are medical kit bags? Correct. And this one has some medical supplies in it? Nope. Nope. Rags. Rags. <laughs> and what's this pipe here for? Oh, a homemade flagpole. And this fire, fire extinguisher is standard? Yeah. Sometimes inside, sometimes outside. And this is also a stretcher carrier? Uh, right, for when the stretchers are lengthwise across the Jeep. Lengthwise. Put it on the windshield and you can... And these are for the stretcher too? No, so when you lay down the windshield, it won't smash against the hood. Wow, the windshield comes that far forward. Yeah. And where'd you find this vehicle? Uh, in a guy's backyard. In, in Albuquerque. In Albuquerque, you found it. Yes, it was his hunting vehicle, but he said he and all his hunting buddies were dead, so he didn't need it anymore. I see his hunting buddies were dead, so he sold it to you. And how much did you pay for it, if I may ask? 750 bucks. 750 and was it in running order? 
So how much have you put into it? More than it's probably worth. <laughs> and what is it worth if you were to try and sell uh, this? Maybe 20. 20,000? 20, yeah. Can we look at the engine? Okay. So six volt battery. So take us on a tour of the engine. Big thing is an oil bath air filter. So there's uh, motor oil at the bottom of it to catch dirt as it sucks in before it transfers it into the carburetor. Horn, oil filter. The oil filter's on top of the engine? Yep, that's the oil filter. That's a voltage regulator. This is a voltage regulator. Correct. Distributor, you said the distributor. Right, the distributor right there. It's electronic, you replace that with electronic? Or that points? No, that's all still points and condensers. What's this thing? Brake, brake? Uh, fuel filter. Fuel filter. There's no hydraulic brakes. No. No. Yeah. Yes, it's hydraulic brakes. But... And what's this? That's the alternator generator? Generator. The fan belt right, needs to replace it. <laughs> I know. Oh well. And what's this back here? This uh, behind the distributor? That's the uh, ignition coil. So that's what gives it its its uh, high voltage electric shocks in order to spark the spark plugs. I see. And it's a six, four, six, four, four cylinder inline four flathead. Do you have any horsepower? I don't know, maybe fifty something right. like right. that. They're pretty slow. It's interesting. It has this. Uh, it's to keep the to direct the airflow into the radiator rather than around it. And what? If something's going to go wrong on this, what goes wrong? Usually the fuel. Something with the fuel. This is kind of cool, though. So the headlights... I'm not sure it'll do it with the stretcher on, but... Or you can move it, take those out using the spotlights? You can flip it up and so you can work on the engine. Oh, that is cool. So that, that's pretty... Yeah, pretty yeah. Pretty smart. We never thought that one. And how do you start it? Well, to start it's pretty easy. The key does not, it's not like an ignition key that cranks it over, it simply turns on the electrical system. That's the electric fuel pump I put in. Because the old mechanical ones aren't very reliable sometimes. Then, up underneath, there's like a push button, and that's actually the starter button. That's the start. It looks like a headlight. Right. On this, right. on this model, it looks like a headlight. On a lot of trucks, it's just a big coil. So, turn on the fuel, turn on the electricity, make sure it's... Then, if I find it, there it is. It's choking. Do. You know what it idles at about? Seven, eight? Maybe. I'm not sure. What's this for? Uh, emergency brake. Parking brake. Oh, parking brake. You had a locked glove box? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't open. That's because you got a little strength. This particular vehicle was smashed and repaired in Phoenix, 1945. Why would they mark it with that? I don't know. Huh. Alright. Okay. We'll go for a ride. We'll be back. What you looking for, Sergeant? Innsbruck, Austria. 
think you took a left turn at Albuquerque. I think you took the wrong turn in Albuquerque. I was told there'd be some fall lines there. <laughs> Is that true? 